So next up we have Dennis Martinault. He is the supervisor of DMAR's Division of Shellfish Management. And he's going to be talking about results of uh, 2008 studies that DMR did in Gouldsboro, Penobscot, Deer Isle, Stonington, Booth Bay, and Woolwich. Thank you, Sarah. Um, again, my name is Dennis Nall. I'm the supervisor of the Shellfish Management Program for the Department of Marine Resources. Um, and I know what you're going to say. Come on, Dennis. Another box, clam box study on the coast of Maine. Yes, it is. However, some minor adjustments. The way we, we approach this one, um, looking at the data that we've done in the past and work that uh, Brian, Dr. Beal has done at DEI, we said, okay, let's take a toolbox, let's look at two types of boxes, um, and employ them in methods that communities or municipalities are going to be using them in. So we're kind of not like a plan bigger, we work with the shelter communities, we place these in locations um, that, as we find out in the end, had resources, um, put them out, and let's see how we, uh, we worked out. So the locations are uh, kind of hard to see on the map up in here. So we have uh, Gouldsboro, Penobscot, Northern Bay, down here in Deer Isle, Stonington, uh, Booth Bay, Pleasant Cove, and over here in, in uh, Woolwich on uh, um, uh, Monsweed Creek. So Gouldsboro is John Small Cove. We've done a bunch of work there in the past, um, both us uh, and DEI. Um, in some fashions of netting and clam capture projects. Northern Bay and Penobscot, uh, we picked that one. It historically has had some good clams. Right now they're at a complete loss. Um, uh, Sunshine Bar and Deer Isle, which is a, a well significant uh, clam resource. We also looked at Web Cove. Web Cove has uh, similar aspects to it, uh, good clam resources. We use Pleasant Cove and Booth Bay. That's an area that we've done studies in the past uh, in and uh, historically has had some decent clam sets in those areas. And then Monsweed Creek, uh, we threw this one in uh, with Woolwich uh, to look at a slightly different area in there that's not historically a clam town but has off and on had clam resources. This is the box design study. So what we have are the classic Brian Beal box, the wooden uh, box that's, that's planted down and staked out without any mud on it, uh, as Brian has always done. And then these are plastic petunia boxes. These have been used in different areas uh, on our end and also Massachusetts for capturing uh, clams that get netted over. John Small Cove. So um, there's the matrix that we put them in. Uh, they go in pretty easy. Uh, we have tremendous help with all the shellfish committees and harvesters in the areas. So we, we plumped that out in the, uh, they all went out in between uh, 31st of May to uh, June 21, working from north to south. Um, and they're all removed in the October time period between October 29 to uh, November 29. And we got into it. The 29th of November was because of a weather related issue for Woolwich. What we found was, at least in this location, we actually had uh, you know, boxes settled in well. Some boxes were netted, these plastic boxes, some boxes were unnetted. Um, and the classic uh, field box, we actually had some that were lost or would tip off. Uh, this is one that was in it, but it actually had clams in the end of it. At the end of the day, after we took our samples, we can see over here that part of this was, okay, we can capture the clams, we can measure them, but we want to see the survivability. So some of those boxes were planted down both in netted and unnetted plots. Our goal is to go back in this spring and do samples within those locations to look at survivability and growth over the time period. That kind of gets into a bigger picture we'll talk about later. Uh, Northern Bay, fantastic mud. If you've walked out in that area, you get stuck in it easily. Um, set out, uh, it seemed to always, always like it was foggy when we were out there. Um, they settled in quite well. They stayed 
well with it. What we did notice, however, green crab, the mud in this area tend to plug up the boxes and the netting quite well. There's a very fine, silty mud. Um, the boxes stayed in well. We did have predation that was being kept out, um, and we'll look at the data in a bit. Sunshine Bar, again, this is a real good clam resource area uh, that we looked at, and that's going to come out later on. Dug in, settled in real well. We had some digging activity that, that happened in around them, which was fine. Um, they all stayed in place, no problems with them. Same thing, we pulled them out, plotted them to the plots, uh, and away we went. Web Cove, uh, real gooey mud in that area. Um, we did have, uh, because of this cove happens to have um, some more commercial fishing activity in there from large boats, we did lose some boxes um, that would float away. They were fortunately recovered. What we did find in this area was a lot of algae growth on uh, the wooden boxes. We did find some nets, um, the way they was pinned down, if we didn't have them buried underneath, they would sometimes pull out, so potential for predation activity getting in. And also the mud settled that and dropped down onto the boxes. So those were kind of a little more activity that we had to work on. However, we did find clams inside of them. Pleasant Cove, again, um, same thing. What we found was, you know, not a lot of, of, we had some water that would settle into boxes. They stayed in well in the mud. Um, uh, in the area, we didn't have them washing out, losing them. So they seemed to, to settle and look well uh, for at least placement. And then Woolwich, which was not an ideal situation um, up at Monsweet Creek. Part of this was, as we come out, it, it goes with you know the two R's for, for uh, everything. You know, for real estate and uh, restaurants, it's all about location, location, location. Well, it's all about location, location, location. Here was access related issues. So this is the only place that we could really realistically get access to along a creek to put these out at. Um, and it went in, they stayed in well. However, what we did find was they really buried in mud, especially the wooden boxes uh, buried in. You can see some of these in here getting sunk into the mud. Um, and it's a lot more work walking through those creeks uh, and dragging the, the samples and the gear in and out of there. So, and it's a location access related issues. And then samples, lots and lots of samples that we had. Um, so what we did, when we sampled, we removed only a core within the plastic boxes. The entire wooden boxes were removed, brought to DEI to be washed. Um, and then uh, we wound up enumerating, uh, my biologist staff wound up enumerating counting the measurements. We did samples outside the plots, you know, a classic design example. So we can see that we had a good chunk of clams in here to measure out. We measured out the large majority of all of them for those counts. These boxes here were then, obviously, that had clams in, you can see these clams that settled into them. We only enumerated the cores and then did the calculation out for the size of the box and put them over. So let's get into the data. You tell me where we're at on this one. So what we can see here is uh, this one way off to the right hand side. These are uh, background levels, so they're very low. A little bit higher in Stonington and uh, Deer Isle, but you can see the background levels are you know, pretty low. These are the cores outside of it. When we look inside, this blue one is those plastic boxes without a net. We caught some pretty decent levels um, within those unnetted boxes <coughs> compared to what it would be normally in background. Some netted boxes actually captured quite well for Goolsboro. Or certainly for the, the Ryan Beal boxes, the, the wooden boxes, they captured extremely well in that area. Penobscot, not so much. We didn't do very well on anything across the board in Penobscot. Um, and we're kind of still at a complete loss on why that, that might be a location related issue. When we look at Deer Isle, however, Sunshine Bar, hmm, wait a second. The, the uh, netted plastic boxes outperform the wooden boxes. Go figure. Um, we actually did some pretty decent growth with just the box without any netting on them. Background is a little bit higher, obviously. When we look at Stonington, we do not have, unfortunately, the uh, wooden box data for here. This was a, a time-related matter and other issues on why that was not collected. But certainly, we did perform quite well. And this was in a location that was getting hit 
by pretty heavy weight traffic from boats uh, and move some boxes around. If we adjust this a little bit farther inside the cove, we might actually have some better um, collection of data. We don't have so we don't have this other data for Booth Bay and for Woolwich, um, partly because it was miserable data, quite honestly, even worse than than uh, than Penobscot. Um, for a total of clams for the netted and unnetted box in, in Pleasant Cove, and there were 20 boxes in each plot of each type, we got three clams in a netted box, an unnetted box, and five clams in an unnetted box. Um, whereas the veal boxes uh, did perform better, they were right around uh, 19 clams per square foot, so we actually captured a bunch of stuff. How uh, we jumped over to the Woolwich area, <coughs> When we look at the Woolwich area on that end of it, we captured 30 clams in the unnetted plastic boxes. We captured eight clams in the netted plastic boxes. We captured two clams in all the boxes, in the wooden boxes. Uh, don't understand that. Most of these numbers here that we're looking at, so when we're looking at uh, Deer Isle Stonington for these performances, we'll just look at this metric here. These numbers wind up being, uh, for Deer Isle, Stonington, for Deer Isle itself, were 400, yes, make sure I'm giving you the right information too. Uh, Sunshine Bar, yeah, were 462 clams per square foot was what that bar is. For the wooden boxes, the veal boxes, we're talking in the, 297 clams per square foot. The unmetted boxes, uh, plastic boxes, were 254 clams per square foot is what those totals come out to be. So we actually captured some pretty high numbers. Same thing with Goolsboro. Goolsboro did extremely well in those wooden boxes. Um, so their wooden boxes were 391 clams per square foot was the capture rate within that. Much lower on the uh, plastic boxes at 136 clams per square foot. So then we're going to look at size ranges, and again, we're all over the board on this one. Um, so our size ranges in Penobscot, even though we're terrible, the minimum size range down here was actually larger in the plastic netted boxes. Um, however, we do see some fairly similar information on sizes for the Goolsboro information. Um, for the largest size, were for all boxes were around 31 millimeters. That's for settlement. Uh, for both the unnetted and Brian Beal boxes, they were 26 millimeters. But the minimum size, again, were all right around one to one and a half millimeters for the minimum size within those areas. So we have similar data. Same thing in, in uh, Deer Isle Stonington. We, when we looked at those maximum size ranges for Deer Isle, we were right around the uh, 24 to 30 millimeter range. And the same thing about one to two millimeters for the minimum size range captured in those boxes. So what we're seeing in both the wooden boxes and the plastic boxes with similar size ranges, some of the wooden boxes actually captured a little bit better um, on it. And it gets back to that location aspect. Where are these replaced? Or areas that were historically good clam flat areas. So where there's clams, you're gonna capture clams in some fashion. And that's how We'll be looking at employing these. When we employ these, the thought process down the road is going to be we captured them, how do we overwinter them? Do we overwinter them on the bottom? Do we pull them out and put them into a, a, a car or a cage for the next growing season? Plant in the spring of the year where hopefully they, they gained a little bit and have better survivability to be going through that growth season in the spring of the year. That's a different long term process. Um, it's been a headache and a half for me on this one because it was all over the board, uh, this data. And, but it's a tool set. It's something that towns can look at and say, hey, a wooden box or a plastic box. A plastic box is fairly inexpensive, but the cost to ship it there um, is, is a little bit more expensive for a wooden box. You gotta build them, there's labor, there's time in it, there's some maintenance aspects to it. But both of them, it's the structure that gets put down on that flat where you capture a high number of clams, then take them down to another flat where you want and plant them down for increasing your growth rates. Certainly, maybe this method might work out better for capturing and easy to employ and remove and move claims around than you know the, the traditional uh, transplants 
or the traditional uh, brushing of flats. Here's something that's a fairly simple, cost-effective method to put down and capture a high number of clams in the right locations and plant them down in another location. We certainly know from uh, other studies, especially with Kyle's study, we can move clams to a location, plant them down, and they're going to survive and they're going to grow well. We're going to capture them in an area where we know we're going to have settlement. So, and I want to thank my uh, my staff and uh, all the harvesters that participated. We couldn't have had this happen. Uh, we've got a pretty busy schedule, but there's a lot of work over that time period, checking that, putting them out, building the boxes, um, and certainly in every one of the towns we had uh, harvesters and shellfish committees with great uh, help uh, for us to make this happen.